Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Call Conversations. I'm Marvin Fausto, President of COL Investment Management. This webinar series brings you closer to the leaders of different businesses and known experts in markets and investing. Today, I'm very excited uh, because we're going to take a closer look at the people who have been making waves in the internet technology business. One of the largest IPOs in the country that brought Dennis and Grace to the number six Forbes richest at $2.8 billion in net worth while providing internet access to more than 1.4 million subscribers. So, uh, medyo masaya to. This conversation is really going to be interesting. So, ladies and gentlemen of Call Conversation, let's all welcome the people behind Converge. Uh, let me start with uh, good afternoon to everyone. And uh, I'm uh, Dennis Anthony Uy. I'm the founder and CEO of Converge. With me today are the key management team, Grace, our president and co-founder. We briefing, we brief discuss of fixed broadband market, and Matthias, our CFO advisor. We give us detail of our financial performance, and Boboy, our COO. We share some key operational updates, and Benji. Our CSO will discuss development in our customer service and the ESG. As an overview, our company is this fast-growing for fixed broadband operator in the country. We dominate the market that's severely underserved and presents a blue ocean opportunity. One hand, the Philippines has massive demand for high-speed broadband because of our population is extremely young and one of the biggest internet users in the world. On the other hand, there is a bit very detailed supply. The legacy operators are just starting to invest in the broadband and the market remains burdened with all copper technology and the wireless, poor wireless uh, with the this old technology. As a result, there is a large demand supply gap. The Philippines has a lowest broadband penetration and one of the slowest internet in Asia. Of 25 million households in the country today, no? only 15% has a high-speed internet connection, which is this high-speed as means the fiber connected. All the rest are hungry for speed and the quality of service. Convert is capturing this huge market opportunity. We have built our own nationwide fiber network with cutting edge technology. And we dominate the market in with 47 market share of net ads in the high speed segment during last quarter. However, we have only just started and my goal is to bring our network to more Filipino across the nation. To all the uh, stakeholders, here's a short video how we far come with the support from our partners and the investment community.
Thank you. Let me now pass it on to Grace for the quick overview of the market. Thank you, Dennis. I'm Grace, the president and co-founder of Converge. This page will show the huge market opportunity for us to further capture. The Philippines has an outsized demand for broadband. Compared with our Southeast Asian neighbors, our country's broadband infrastructures lag behind significantly. The Philippines has long been saddled with the legacy copper infrastructure. We're also one of the most underpenetrated markets in Asia at only 12% fiber penetration as of December 2020, while some of our neighboring countries are already at 30 or even more. As of June this year, around 3.5 million households are connected to fiber. More than 14 million of those who can afford are still not connected, while 1.8 million are with no, non-fiber broadband. There's still a significant unserved market for us to capture, more than four times of the current subscriber count in the industry. Next slide, please. We at Converge firmly believe that fiber to the home is the only future-proof connectivity technology that will allow to serve the ever-growing connectivity requirement, requirements in our home. Today, an average household has three to four internet activities ongoing simultaneously requiring at least 25 Mbps of bandwidth for a seamless online experience. Our entry-level plan today provides 35 Mbps, guaranteeing an enjoyable internet experience for our customers. However, we all know bandwidth requirements at home are growing exponentially each year. According to Cisco's latest annual internet report, home video may require up to 1 gigabyte of bandwidth in the future as the adoption of VR and 8K TV increases. And this one gig is only for a single internet activity of home video. Our network, the youngest fiber network in the Philippines, is built to support these exploding bandwidth requirements of the future. Let me now pass you over to Matias to discuss our key financial highlights. Matias. Thank you much, Grace, and good afternoon again, everyone. Um, let me share some uh, some numbers. So Grace just mentioned that the Philippines is massively underserved when it comes to fiber-based broadband. Now, our mission at Converge is to rapidly expand our network so we can reach a growing number of households in the Philippines. Now, as an investor, the number you will want to track here carefully is what we call the number of um, fiber ports, which you can see on the right-hand side on the page here. This is essentially the inventory that Converge has and that we can sell to our customers. As of June 2021, we had 4.6 million ports, but just 1.4 million subscribers. So we can theoretically sell 3 million subscribers without incurring any additional kickbacks. Our aim is to have about 7.5 to 8 million ports by 2025, which would allow us to reach 55% of households in the Philippines. Moving on to the next page, um, the top line growth. Here are three key indicators that uh, are relevant for our top line. One, obviously, um, the subscriber number. Now we have about 1.4 million subscribers, which is approximately 29% of the broadband market in the Philippines. Now, this compares just to 20% a year ago. So it shows you how much faster we have been growing compared to competition. Um, the RPU is what we call the average revenue per user. Here again, we have a single, uh, mid-single digit uh, increase in the RPU as we sell more of the um, premium plans. And then finally, the churn rate at 1.1%. Those are the customers that we disconnect on average per month compared to our total subscriber base. So again, here we have the lowest churn rate in the industry. Now, um, next page, you will see that these operational results translate into this unique financial growth profile that Coverage has. 82% revenue growth, 96% EBITDA growth, close to 160% net income growth over the last 12 months. The margins are growing. Um, why? Because we're getting bigger, economies of scale, but then also we have specific cost initiatives like buying international cables, so we don't have to spend expensive money for leases and boboy will talk um, on that in a bit 
Um, but most importantly to our investors will be the ROIC, the return on invested capital. We are far ahead of competition and peers, not only regionally, but globally, in terms of the return on invested capital. We don't waste shareholders' money. We are very efficient in deploying the, the capital, and we track very closely, um, for example, the utilization of our network, which allows us to maximize the capital efficiency. And then finally, the CAPEX. Converge has a 20 billion peso CAPEX program this year, very large program. It will probably be around the same size next year, maybe even a bit higher, but we can fully fund this. We have um, currently about 60% of our CAPEX covered by cash flows. And then we have a very large amount, 23 billion of um, undrawn debt facilities or credit line with our banks that we can tap into. Now, um, by 2023, our cash flows should be higher than our CAPEX. So with that positive cash flow, we potentially could think about dividends in, in that um, time frame. But currently, our aim is to deploy 100% of uh, the cash that we generate into the organic growth to create superior returns for our shareholders. Now, let me hand you over to Boboy on operational updates. Boboy. Thank you, Matthias, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, let me start by uh, updating you on the status of our uh, backbone that uh, powers our Go National strategy. Our uh, backbone, uh, at least the first leg, is already live. In fact, our Davao operations is now running on our own network. As you can see from the map on the left, uh, the blue submarine segments uh, are already completed. And then, of course, there are inland segments that interconnect them. So from Luzon up to Davao, uh, we're already live uh, again. In the meantime, we are busily constructing the red lines or the, the uh, Western segment. And we expect to complete this no later than end of the year, but uh, it's looking like we will finish it earlier. So by the time that we're done, the Philippines will have uh, not only the newest, but the most modern uh, domestic backbone in the, in the country. As you can see, the backbone will uh, not only uh, support our Visayas and Mindanao operations in a very redundant fashion, but will also cover uh, the Palawan Peninsula. On the map on the right, you can see uh, the whole network. So we're already operational from as far north as Cagayan, all the way down to uh, Davao, and soon uh, up to General Santos. Again, uh, we will be completing this uh, no later than the end of the year. Uh, by now, it's more than 80,000 kilometers already. Uh, by the way, these are lengths only. No, These are not uh, fiber kilometers. Our fiber kilometers are in the hundreds of thousands, just like some other telcos in the country. Uh, again, this has allowed us to launch and... No, sorry. Next slide, please. Uh, and this is uh, what has happened because of the backbone. Um, Cebu has been on an official launch uh, because it, uh, it was the first uh, city to be hit by our backbone. And Davao is now also uh, operational uh, and running on the same backbone I mentioned. Uh, again, as far north as Ilocos Norte and Cagayan were operational already. Um, we're also, we also went live uh, very recently you know, this week. Again, De Oro, Iloilo, and coming uh, in the next few days, uh, Panay and Masbate. Masbate happens to be in the path of the backbone and is one of the most underserved markets in the country today. Next slide, please. As for the international side, uh, which is also very important because uh, most of our content comes from overseas. You know, last year we uh, signed a deal with Telstra to buy five terabits of submarine cable on two different cable systems, connecting us to Singapore, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, and soon to Japan. We uh, further strengthened that by acquiring controlling interest of the actual cable landing stations that they used to land in the Philippines. One is in Cavite, one is in Nasugbu, Batangas. So with this, uh, we now uh, own our first international submarine cable landing stations. And what does this mean? It means that we are now totally independent when we talk of international submarine cable connectivity. 
We also announced uh, several months back that we had invested in a fiber pair in Bifrost, the first cable that will link the United States to Singapore directly with a branch into Davao. Uh, we will be landing this in Davao and uh, we will own one whole fiber pair. You know, we will not own a small chunk, but we actually own the full fiber pair. And technically, we actually own two fiber pairs. One goes from Davao to the U.S. and Guam. Another goes from Davao to Singapore. And this is in preparation for the continuous growth of our business. So by 2024, when this goes live, we will have more capacity on top of the current investments we have. Next slide, please. We also crossed uh, more than one and a half million subscribers. So consistent with our objective to, to try to see what more we can add as a value to our customers. Uh, we recently launched uh, an IPTV service. Uh, maybe just to reiterate, no, Dennis started this whole thing 20 plus years ago in Angeles City as a cable TV company. In fact, we still operate a cable TV business uh, under an affiliate, no, Pacific Cable Net. And we operate uh, in Central Luzon plus a few other uh, provinces and cities where we have a cable TV license. Because cable TV and telco cannot mix. No? They are two separate licenses and franchises. So Vision is an IPTV product. It is owned by our affiliate again, Pacific Cable Net. But it runs on the pure fiber network of Converge. Uh, it also, by the way, is powered by a setup box, which is a fully licensed Android TV box. No, It's not a... Uh, uh, one of those that you can buy in Green Hills. And it allows us to do many things. Of course, the first one is cable TV or linear pay TV as we call it. Uh, next is a uh, video on demand. Our first offering was the Mani Pacquiao pay-per-view fight. Um, it's also an Android uh, box. Therefore, it does two, uh, full internet service. No? So you can now do internet browsing on your big screen TV. And finally, uh, we recently have an agreement with one of the big gaming companies. They will port about five casual games to run on our box. So you have an all-in box uh, under the Vision product. It's also priced very affordably. We carefully selected the channels that are relevant so that more people can begin to experience, you know, uh, cable TV as we, as we know it from the past. So that's our new offering, uh, Vision. At this point, I'll turn you over to Benj, our Chief Strategy Officer. Thank you, Boboy. Afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'll just talk briefly about uh, customer service and the customer experience, how we're improving on that. And also because, uh, you know, uh, environment, social, and governance factors are becoming more and more important for investors like you and also our customers and even our employees. I'll give you an update on what we're doing in the sustainability front. So first, let me talk about customer service, customer experience. Um, I saw, I think, in the chat uh, box, there are a couple of questions on this topic. No? So I hope that with uh, this section, I can answer some of them. But we've been working very hard to upgrade uh, our platforms, uh, our IT, our people, our processes, uh, so that it's easier for our customers to reach our contact center agents. Uh, we've implemented an omni-channel customer relationship management system, uh, and this enables more efficient and automated distribution of calls and messages uh, so we can handle our subscriber concerns uh, as quickly as possible. We've also significantly increased our uh, call center trunking capacity so we can accommodate more calls at any given time. And uh, also, uh, we have a mobile app uh, and we are continuing to see a steady increase in uh, uh, subscribers who are using this channel uh, to uh, to uh, you know, to view their bill, to pay their bill, you can pay it in the app, uh, monitor their connection st status, for example, your modem temperature, how many people are, uh, how many devices are connected to your, uh, to your, uh, to your modem, including maybe your neighbors, right? Uh, and also how to, you can also raise tickets in the app. Uh, we've also, uh, on the people side, we've uh, added over 60 new agent seats uh, during the quarter, the second quarter, in line with our rapid subscriber growth uh, and uh, we've also beefed up the management team for uh, our customer experience uh, uh, team. 
So as a result of uh, all of these process, people, and uh, technology improvements, uh, we've further improved our answer call rate to 96% in the last quarter, and we're continuing to make strides uh, in this front, and we'll, uh, in, in the coming quarters, we will be reporting on other innovations that we're making uh, in customer experience. Next slide. So let me talk a little bit about sustainability uh, now. No, so Converge, uh, well, Dennis and Grace specifically, they've always had this passion to uh, serve customers, give back to the community and the nation, and really uh, fill in a, a gap, you know, uh, you know, bridge the digital divide, provide the best technology for our customers. Uh, this is really in their DNA as entrepreneurs. But now that we're a uh, listed company, right, we, need, we thought that we needed to be a bit more uh, deliberate about it, a bit more structured about this. Uh, so we held a number of workshops and consultations, uh, including with some investors uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and other stakeholders to craft our sustainability commitment. Now this now becomes our guide for making strategic and tactical business decisions so that when we make decisions, it's not just about profit, but also about the planet and, and the people, uh, the people we serve, the people who we employ. So uh, we've also, so this is the slide that, uh, that really encapsulates everything we're doing. Uh, we're all about empowering the Filipino people uh, and the nation through technology. And we're doing this by res while respecting humanity and the environment so that we can create a prosperous and sustainable future for all. And underlying that are four key pillars, uh, one on our customers, a number, it's number two is uh, to protect also our investors and uh, other stakeholders like their bondholders, I'm sorry, our, bond, our debtors, our creditors, sorry, uh, by ensuring that there's good governance, right? Third is around giving back to our planet, making sure that our operations are green, that we don't, uh, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't uh, do anything that will harm uh, the environment. And fourth is really to make sure that we're, when we, we, we roll out our network, we roll out our services, we're creating a positive impact on the community and for the country, right? And, uh, to, to you know, we, we're, we're coming up with targets around these. So it's going to be quantitative targets so that we know that, you know, we're making progress against these goals. And we've also launched already a number of programs to move the needle. Uh, for example, we're starting to make the transition to renewable energy, starting with our uh, PASIG uh, headquarters. Uh, we're also addressing the issue of uh, electronic waste, e-waste, so yung mga, uh, you know, end-of-life uh, modems and uh, IT equipment and network equipment, uh, making sure that they don't just don't go to the landfill and we're able to uh, uh, recycle or recover or reuse. Uh, strengthen, we've also strengthened our enterprise risk management and corporate governance, corporate governance framework. Uh, we're making our network and operations more resilient in the face of natural disasters and uh, climate change. Uh, and we're also safeguarding children from online sexual abuse uh, through our membership in the Internet Watch Foundation. And, and of course, uh, because we're still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, we're also doing our part to protecting our people and our communities uh, through this time, uh, through vaccination, education, social, uh, you know, adopting all of the uh, minimum health protocols, etc. For example, all of us right now, we're all uh, working from home, right, to, to ensure that, you know, we're all kept safe. So in sum, we're already making a lot of strides in sustainability in terms of ESG, and we're continuing to embed this in our operational plans so that we can fulfill Dennis's and Grace's vision of connecting the unserved and underserved and bridging the digital divide. So that really now ends our presentation, and I guess we can move to uh, Q&A now.